What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to talk about the Craig Foreman pocket hole machine. Welcome back, Jason with Vents Woodworking. This week I want to discuss the Craig pocket hole machine. The reason I'm discussing this pocket hole machine made by Craig is because I recently did a post on my Instagram and I got a whole bunch of questions. The question that I got most often about the Craig pocket hole machine was do I think it's worth it? So what I'm going to do today is I'm basically going to give you an overview of everything that the machine does and show you its capabilities and kind of compare it to some of the other models. In the end, I'll give a recommendation for who I think that the pocket hole machine would be good for and who could probably just make do with the smaller, less expensive Craig versions. As usual, I will leave an affiliate link down in the bottom. If you just want to go find out more information or if at the end of this video you choose that it might be something you want to purchase, you can click on that link and get more information and or purchase the item. Before we get into it, I do want to apologize because I wanted to have this video released yesterday. However, unfortunately, as you can see from the background, I finally painted my shop. So people watching my videos would find it a little bit more enjoyable and not so ugly. So for those of you that are watching this video, I really hope you enjoy the new backdrop. Most people are probably familiar with uh, the smaller pocket hole drilling machines, such as the Craig Mini or the Craig Junior, or then you even have the Craig K4 and the new model, the K5, which has built-in dust collection and storage and all of those things. So what makes this different from those other mentioned machines? The Craig Foreman has all of those great features, kind of roped into one, but gives you a larger work surface and really provides you with a much more efficient, easier way to do pocket holes. Now I'm gonna go over a couple of the features up close so you can see what each one of them do. So the first thing we have here is built-in dust collection. And there's a hose that runs from here up to the drill bit guide. And when you have dust collection hooked up to this, the dust collection is absolutely phenomenal. The next thing we have is this adjustable fence. And the fence, as you can see, has different lines indicating both imperial and metric standards uh, and a center line, as well as some movable stops that are spring activated in the event that you wanted to make perfectly repeatable cuts. You could bump your piece of work up to this here, and then if you needed to depress it, it simply goes in. It comes with an Allen key, as you can see here. You just loosen this up, and these will slide left and right, and they can be placed wherever you need to place them. Here there are three separate uh, preset drilling depths. You have half inch, three quarter inch, and an inch and a half. And in order to set those up, all you do on both sides is you get the back of your fence to whatever line, in this case we're gonna use three quarters of an inch, and then you tighten down these knobs and that gives you the proper spacing based off the material thickness that you're using. As you can see, it also has both imperial and metric for your measurements. Here on the handle, it has two different triggers. This here is a safety in which you have to depress in order to start to bring the handle down. And then this trigger right here is what activates the drill bit itself. So you just simply press down on this and it turns on. On the back side of this arm, you have one of two adjustment knobs. This adjustment knob here will adjust how far out the actual drill bit itself uh, will go, or you can also draw it back should you need to. And this will make more sense here shortly when I bring you in for a closer look on how to actually set this up. The second knob I was referring to that's attached to this arm is actually the clamp itself. And you simply turn this down and when you set up, you have your piece of wood underneath it. You just make sure that this is uh, just barely touching that piece of wood and then you can tighten it down. And when you lower this, it actually moves the clamp itself and applies more downward pressure. So now I'll give you a closer look at what's actually underneath this plate here. So you have this plate which is conveniently supported by this little bracket that easily stores away down inside of the machine itself. 
Now to change the bit on this, it's actually very, very easy. And all you have to do is release this pin that is connected to the guide arm, which is connected to the handle that you depress. And you simply slide the head unit out just like this. Changing the bit is as easy as lifting up on this collet, pulling the bit out. If you need to change one because the tip of it broke or whatever, this is simply goes right back in by releasing, making sure that it's set. And once you know it's locked into place, you're good to go. Placing the motor back in is just as easy as it was to take out. You simply slide it down. You find your guide rod, you grab your pin, you align the guide rod up with the holes, and you reinsert your pin. So one of the accessories that this comes with is this setup block. So we've already discussed how you set up your fence based off the thickness of the material. This right here is your guide that tells you what screw length you need to be using. So let's just say we'll set this for three quarters of an inch. For three quarter inch material, I know that I'm gonna use an inch and a quarter screw. And so this is what I will use to set up how far out my bit comes. And the way that you do that, as you can see, each one of these little stepped pieces right here has a small hole in it. So what we're trying to achieve here is when this comes out, you'll notice that on the, the front of the bit, it's a much skinnier portion than the regular thick portion of the bit. That skinny point is what you are trying to make sure goes into this hole and it stops when the larger part of the bit touches the wall of this little setup block. So what you'll see here is now that I'm plunging that bit out, I wanna line up that hole and make sure that it's going all the way to the setup block itself. And in this case, it looks like it needs to come out just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that knob in the back that is going to change that. So now that I've made the adjustment, I'll go ahead and it looks like it's just right. So now that we've got everything set, I'll go ahead and give you a closer look. So as you start to depress this, the bit comes out and that is exactly how it's going to drill it into your workpiece. So the only thing to do from here is to go ahead and set the tension on this piece here and go ahead and start making some pocket holes. What we're trying to achieve here is I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of pressure with the clamp before I actually bring down the arm itself. Just enough to where I can still get it out without any problems. So then I'm gonna go ahead and use this second locking knob to go ahead and lock it in place. And now when I go ahead and pull down on this, it applies the proper clamping pressure to ensure that this piece does not move. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of pocket holes along this piece of scrap plywood and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I just did 10 pocket holes really, really, really fast. It's super easy. You can just keep the machine running, go down. Uh, even if you had all your layout lines done, uh, there's a center line marker there. You can just simply slide uh, and continue to go and do every single pocket hole that you need to do. So as you can see, uh, based off that little demonstration, how beneficial it could be if you're somebody that uses pocket holes a lot and the results on it are just fantastic. And one of the biggest benefits, in my opinion, and what sold me on it was the fact that I didn't constantly have to unclamp, slide things down, clamp it back down, take my drill, stick it down into the hole. And so I just wanted everything to be more compact um, and much faster when using pocket holes. So now the interesting thing is, is that when I bought this um, probably a little over a year ago, 
at the time I was actually building a lot of things with pocket holes. And so when I saw this and I finally decided to buy it, I was like, hey, this is gonna be perfect. It's gonna make all of my projects go so much faster. Um, and then after I bought it, I actually stopped using pocket holes so much. Um, but I still do use it quite often simply because of the fact that I do do a lot of cabinets. And this device, when doing cabinets and needing to make quick, repeatable cuts on multiple, multiple pieces is really invaluable. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, the big question, is this product right for you? Here's what I'll tell you. If you're somebody that uses pocket holes a lot, you find yourself using them on many projects, um, you build cabinets, you're deciding to uh, use them for cables or frames or face frames or picture frames, or you're just using pocket holes a lot, then I would 100% say you should invest the money and buy this. And the very first time you use it, you will be glad that you did. If you don't find yourself using a lot of pocket holes or you really just have no need for it and you just use them occasionally, then no, it's not for you. Um, you'd be much better off purchasing one of the less expensive options uh, if you're only gonna use it every once in a while. Now, would I buy this again if I lost it today? The answer is yes, I would. Even though I don't use a lot of pocket holes anymore, the ease of use and how quick it is to go through my projects, such as cabinets, which I start to build a lot more of lately, then 100% totally worth it. I would much rather use this than going through uh, manually and doing each individual one. Like I stated earlier, I will leave a affiliate link down in the description below if you wanna go and find out more information uh, on this item. And I'll actually go ahead and leave links to all the other different models of the Craig Jig so you can go in and you can compare and contrast between each one until you decide which one is right for you should you not already have one. Like I always say everybody, thank you so much uh, for being a subscriber or watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the messages and emails that I've been getting lately. Um, I'm always here to help. So if you ever wanna reach out, please feel free to leave something down in the comment section below. Or if you're not following me on Instagram, go check me out there at Bench Woodworking. If you're following me there, you'll get to see what I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm really active uh, in between each one of my releases for YouTube. If you're not subscribed, do me a favor, go and hit the subscribe button. And if you have a friend you think might benefit from this video, go ahead and share it. I look forward to the next video, which just so you know, I'm gonna do a couple of videos that kind of have to do with uh, cabinets. So you'll actually get to see uh, this Craig Foreman in action and maybe talk about installing some drawer slides and some other things. So that's kind of what you have to expect coming up in the next couple of videos. Again, thank you everybody so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.